So since all Aussie Day, there's been a few casualties. This right here, which is the battery full of the turbo, completely busted. It's throwing battery acid everywhere, and it has pretty much destroyed the paint all around the battery in the engine bay, like all around here as well. It's uh, it's not looking. This uh, this piece of intercooler piping right here, it when it gets too hot, it does start to separate from the rest of it from the rest of the intercooler piping simply because it is resting on the actual turbo side intake at the moment. And for the first time in about a week, I have the NA back. I haven't seen this car in a very long time. It's probably been about three weeks since I've driven it last. And it's just been sitting out there in my visitor car park, just not doing anything. I feel, I feel horrible. So I thought for this video right here, what I would do is I would go over both the cars, everything that needs to be done to them, everything that's going to happen to them, uh, before this one gets sold and this one here actually works. So uh, yeah, let's get to it. So this right here, as you guys all know, is the NA. This is the panel swapped car. This is pretty much the parts bin at the moment. However, it does still look amazingly good. At the moment, it's just dirty. Everything about this car is really clean, is really nice. There's just some things I've got to fix on it. So obviously, I've got to fix up the paint all over it, and it's actually in for paint this weekend. So it's going to have a full correction done by me and my friend Grant, uh, who you guys might have seen with the supercharged VA. Uh, we're going to be going over this car completely. I'm going to be doing the interior, I'm going to be doing everything. But before we can do that, I need to swap out all the seats between this car and this car here, because this one here, the seats are a little bit more worn, and this one here, there's still fairly fresh and new. As for other things I need to fix on it, I think this headlight here is the only one that works. I don't think any of the fog lights work. Um, none of the parkers work. Uh, pretty much this car here, the lights are just an absolute shambles at the moment. Uh, this indicator here does not work whatsoever. And the funniest thing about the back of it at the moment is the fact that this tail light right here works and this brake light here works. However, they're both swapped out on each side. So, so when the tail lights are on, this one is the only one that lights up. And then when it's braking, this one here and this one here is the only one that comes on. But it's so funny at night when you have literally like all the lights on and you have them turned on. This one here turns off and this one here turns on and this one here turns on. It's like, it's ridiculous. So this car here before I sell it really needs a good clean. Um, it needs all the lights fixed. I'm going to have to pull off the front bumper, get all the fog lights sorted as well. Um, just make sure that everything's neatened up on this. I, I got to bolt in the airbox as well um, because I took the airbox out because I sold the uh, the aftermarket one that I had, the Herod system that I have. I've also got to swap out the door locks between the two cars. That's why I've been carrying around two keys. Um, yeah, this car here, I'm hoping to get the majority of the work done tonight. However, the turbo at the moment, it's it's uh, not looking so great. So I think I'm going to get the battery out of this car here and put it in the turbo because believe it or not, this car here is actually better on fuel than my NA is around town. And I prefer to drive this to work because it's better on fuel and also it's faster and it looks better and I love it. So this battery right here, I'm hoping I can get onto warranty so I still have to go and check that out. Um, but at the moment, this car has absolutely no power, no battery, no nothing. So I've got to connect up a battery of some description so I can unlock all the doors. Um, this lock here needs to be changed out with the other car. I also have a brake light out at the moment. However, I do have something very special in the boot I want to show you guys. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so stupid. That's right, it's got no power. Don't worry, I'll show you guys later. So, I bought a few parts very recently and uh, they're all just sitting in here. Um, I managed to pick up a spare rocket cover at the moment, which I really want to paint. Um, it's currently all in primer. It was an NA rocket cover, so it was uh, raw. It's had primer done to it, so this is ready for paint, ready to just sand up, paint. Awesome. I also got a spare set of brake calipers, which I'm going to be painting up as well. And they're both going to be going the same color as the cars, which is Breeze. So the turbo has also developed a uh, squeak in the front as well. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to have to sort that out. And it's also got a knock in either the front or the back. I've started hearing it more from the back very recently. Gene sorted it from the front. Um, I felt it from the front and then it started to do something down here as well. So yeah. So the goal is with the turbo to try and make it as good as I possibly can for when all my family comes around. And that's for my 21st birthday in April. So I'm really wanting to make sure that this car is perfect so I can cart all my family around from Brisbane to Sunshine Coast. 
and also the fact that I'm going to be spending a lot of time away in April. Um, I have heaps of days booked off work, um, so I'm probably not going to be able to make many videos while my family's here. And then straight after that, on the 23rd of April, I'm actually flying out to go to Italy. So I'm flying over there, going and doing a promotional video, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, I need to get these two cars sorted. This car's rego runs out in June, so I need to sell that car before then because I don't want to be messing up. Because I don't want to be messing around trying to get registration and uh, you know just yeah all the stuff that comes with that. So this car here. I'm hoping we'll have everything apart from the lights done tonight. Yeah, let's get to it. So tonight's job is to get all the seats from this car here into this car here. Hoping it should be like a two hour job, but I know I'm gonna be here till 9.30. Um, so yeah, I also wanna take off uh, these right here. And I'm also gonna do the door locks in the uh, driver's side because I found out that was super easy. Um, and I also, if I can get around to it tonight, also wanna swap out the keys. Um, but I think I might wait till another night to do that because I don't wanna be stuck with two cars that don't move. So let's try it. Right, so both batteries are now out of the car, um, simply because we are going to be changing over seats today. So we're going to be playing around with airbags, we're going to be playing around with looms. I really don't want to short circuit anything, um, even though I've probably already short circuited both my cars, considering uh, Fords like to do that every now and then and destroy ICC screens. Um, however, we shouldn't have an issue, um, so I've just unplugged everything, make sure we don't have any airbags blowing up in our faces. So I just found out that all these uh, bits here are all Torx bits. Stupidly for me, I don't have any Torx bits, so I just jumped back in the car, battery back in, about to go down to Bunnings and go buy some Torx bits. So I ended up lashing out at Bunnings, I ended up getting like a full set of Torx bits, considering like the only stuff I was using was like the really cheapy stuff. Um, so yeah, managed to get a full set of Torx bits, um, full quarter inch Sid Comb socket set, because I actually don't have a, um, a quarter inch and the only, I think I have an eight inch um, up in the toolbox, however I got it from Harbour Freight over in America and it sucks. Um, and then I got a set of circlet removers um, that you press in and they come out of the top. So yeah, um, I think I need some circlet removers for the rear. Um, I didn't actually have them anyway, so I just decided to get them. So actually, now that we're 5,000 hours into this video, let's start taking the seat out. Now in theory, this one right here should be a T50 Torx. So let's quickly pull it off this thing. Oh, thank God for that. So both seats are out of the car. Um, there's Caden enjoying his little pizza he got for me. Cheers, mate. Uh, ignore the fact that I'm hungry. This is how all cars should come. This is incredible. No seats. It's amazing. I'm gonna keep it like this forever. The next owner of this car is gonna have a no seat car because it's so much better than seats. I hope. Sweet. So I just been like doing heaps of stuff after we had pizza and I kind of just like went all out and tried to do it. So we managed to get the back seats out. They're the easiest thing to remove. All you have to do is like 
push back the seat and then it lifts up and that's how you take the bottom section off. Um, the side section, literally, there's two side pieces here. All you need is a flathead screwdriver and a circlet remover. Um, literally, you can take all the back seats out so easily. So what you do with the side piece, you yank it up from the bottom and then you drop in, if you look up down here, you look up, you just press a flathead screwdriver down to like a clip here, press that down and then you pull the top out and then you have this little mechanism down here. So what we're going to be doing is grabbing the circlet remover. There we go. Cool. So the circlet's down here somewhere, hopefully. Let's get the point torch down here. <laughs> so I can try and find it somewhere. Where the hell is it? Where? I don't know, somewhere. They just like to go in random places. Anyway, um, I'll be able to find it later. The next thing you do is just get a flathead, just move it down here. And that pries these two little sections apart here. Move that one out of the way, the seat lifts up, and then let's jump everything out of the way. Oh, bang! Got him! <laughs> yeah. And then all you have to do is literally lift up the seat and pull it out from the socket there, and this whole section is removed. How simple is that? Oh, don't lose that, mate. That is super easy. I don't think that easy. I reckon, Caden. Seems easy enough. Yeah, what's that? When I want to swap my own seats. Oh, oh my god, there's a spider. Where? I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> what was that? Did you see it? Uh, was it water from the roof? No. I feel like it's still in my hair. It's just going crazy. I'm oh, not. Is everything in his back? Mm, apart from a shirt, no. No, cool. That's fine. Alrighty. Yeah, that's literally how easy to remove seats from a car. So after getting pizza, talking to a few of my roommates, having two beers, and going to Bunnings to go $110 worth of tools to do the job, one of the cars is done. It's currently, actually my phone's flat. I think it's about 8 p.m. right now. Uh, so I've managed to get one car fully stripped. Um, so my goal tonight is probably just to get one car finished. Um, I'll quickly show you guys right now. It is actually so sweet. I've never seen a car like this before. I've never seen a car interior as stripped as much as this before. But um, yeah, it looks really cool. But the worst thing is, is because I'm only doing one car tonight, I, uh, I realized just how much of a task this is going to be to try and move, considering I'm going to be sitting on the floor and not knowing where to go. So yeah. It's really cool though. And this right here is every single interior piece there is in an FG Falcon. So obviously down here, you have the uh, main seat for the back. Uh, so this is really easy. This is probably the easiest seat to remove. All you have to do is, uh, there's two clips at the very bottom of this. I'll quickly show you if I can lift it all up at once. There's two clips at the very bottom here and literally they just hook around. Uh, so all you have to do is push all the foam back and lift up and this whole seat comes out. So that was super easy. Uh, probably the next one you wanna do is this one right here. This is the side bolster for the rear. There's two pieces like this. And so what these do, um, they're very simple. So these actually have a big metal clip on the back of them. So all you have to do is uh, drop the seats down in the middle and they have plastic tabs all down here, which I probably snapped. Actually, I actually don't think I did. They have side plastic tabs at the back, uh, so all you have to do literally is just pull them out from the bottom and then get a flathead screwdriver and push it down from the top, push this pin in and that comes straight out. So that's probably the second easiest one to remove. Um, and then these ones here, a little bit more difficult. So this right here is the main back seat. So obviously you have your left, your middle and your right. What you actually have to do is you have to get a circlet remover uh, so this one right here, and you guys would have seen in that video before exactly how to remove them. You remove the circlet first, and then uh, you push the plastic piece out of the way with a flat head screwdriver. Um, push those, uh, separate those two parts, move the pins out, lift up one side of the seat and slide out the other side. It's super simple. Now these seats right here, um, this right here is the passenger seat, this right here is a driver's seat. This one here is a lot heavier, obviously with all the mechanics in it. So this seat right here, um, just remove that to easily get it outside the car. Um, but yeah, this seat, it's literally just pull off all these plastic trims here. One bolt, two bolt, three bolt, four bolt. 
this entire seat just slides straight out. Um, all you have to do is remove the looms and this is the amount of tools that you will need. Um, not even that. So you'll need obviously circlet removers, uh, you will need a long flat blade screwdriver, you'll also need a Torx bit, Torx size 50, um, and that's what I use to uh, get rid of the front seats, um, and I just used a, uh, I just used a half inch to quarter inch uh, socket, sorry, I just used an extension, uh, and then a half inch to uh, quarter inch socket, uh, adapter and then I just used a, a T50 Torx bit on a socket um, that was easy and then a small flat blade just to get the looms out and literally this is pretty much all the hardware you guys will see so obviously you've got a circlip here, you got two circlips there, eight bolts um, on obviously these, these metal bits which I still have on this seat right here um, yeah it's literally the easiest thing um, so this right here, this com entire car has been completely done. Um, so my goal is just to build the turbo tonight. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to rip out all the rest of the seats inside the turbo. I've already done, uh, obviously, the, the main rear seat simply because it was the easiest one to do. Um, however, I still have to get the uh, two middle seats and also uh, this section out here, which you guys can't see because it's just that dark. Um, so yeah, let's get all that out, and um, I probably won't film this section, um, yeah, it's super simple though. Not really sure, but my brain tells me I've been here before, don't want to draw any attention to all the crazy things that I shouldn't mention. Not really sure, but it feels like my feet are glued to the floor, don't want to open up my mouth, cause I'm afraid of what's gonna come out. Life is but a dream This can't be happening Wake up, wake up, scream I'm in a twisted reality Twisted So after all that, two beers, two pizzas, two cars, two interiors, I have two interiors out and now I'm just going to build one car, I'm just going to build the turbo back up today because um, as I said before in the earlier start of the video, at the earlier point of the video, uh, the turbo is actually a little bit more fuel economic than the other car. It's also quite a little bit nicer to drive, um, a little bit louder and a little bit nicer looking at the moment. So we're going to build the turbo up. Uh, currently the turbo is completely gutted, uh, it's got absolutely no seats in it whatsoever. It's uh, oh you can't even see. It's uh, turbo's looking pretty mental at the moment. I love that view right there, that's so cool. So yeah, gonna build the turbo um, and then I'm gonna have to actually move this car out the way. I'm not actually quite sure where I'm gonna be able to move it, but we can move it somewhere, we don't mind. I might even be able to put Peggy's car down the very back there and just move the turbo in front of it, but you know, we'll see. So all this stuff should be pretty easy to put back together. Um, literally two front seats, place them, in, uh, place them in place, bolt them straight in, shouldn't be an issue. And then the rear seats, I think the only issue will probably be that circlet, trying to get that circlet back in. Apart from that, it's, it's literally just putting in stuff, bolting it in if it needs to, or snapping it in if it needs to. So yeah, no issues there. Um, so yeah, I might, so yeah, I may or may not film this, but um, yeah, let's, uh, let's get to work. Back in place. 
and voila, we have a nice, clean, non-stained, non-worn back seat. Beautiful. Looks amazing. And it feels so much better than the last one. I'm very, very happy. I'm just gonna leave the car like this. I reckon if I just steer from back here, it's actually such a cool view because it looks like you're in the driver's seat and you're just like chilling here and then like your feet only go to there and your arms only go to there. So that's like, you know, for someone like me, this is, must be what it feels like to be really tall to like just grab a seat. Imagine if I was like a elastic girl, you just go, whoosh. Like, it kind of looks weird on the camera because it's so zoomed out. You know, like... But yeah, I can't reach it. So yeah, anyway, um, I'm sure she makes those little noises too. Um, but yeah, for uh, someone so small, this is quite a quite an experience. Um, but anyway, let's go put uh, the short person uh, seats back in. I wonder if you were the tallest guy in the world, whether you could actually reach this. This is quite cool, actually. This would be awesome for interior shots. Why don't I film all my videos with no front seats? It'd be wicked. Oh. So seats are all back in the turbo now. Uh, I just finished it off. However, I did run onto a major issue. Of course, because it wouldn't be another Zach Bordy vlog without another major issue. Uh, one of the issues I had was uh, the two seats have two different looms uh, for either the seat belt loom or the airbag loom. Uh, so it's probably easier to show you on this. I don't know if you guys will be able to see this. Oh god, you won't at all. So I don't know how well you guys can see that, but this loom here is actually black. And you might be able to see down there, it actually needs to go into a green loom. Uh, so if you come around here, uh, this loom down here obviously is also black because that's the old turbo seat. And then if you have a look over on this car, this loom here is green. So, so somewhere along the line when Ford produced both these cars back in 2008 or back in June of 2008, they put two different seats inside these two cars. I don't know why, but we're gonna have to find that out another day because at the moment it's currently 11.30 at night and I have work tomorrow. So when I start the car, it's probably gonna have an airbag fault or either a, it's gonna have a seat bag, it's gonna have a seat belt or airbag fault. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be an airbag because there's two separate looms on there. I can only plug in one. Uh, so maybe fingers crossed we might be able to get away with it, but I, I, I really do think uh, we'll get an airbag fault. Uh, so anyway, let's plug in one of the batteries and uh, see how we go. All right, so here's the moment of truth. Seeing if the battery works. Hey, we got power at least. All right, let's just put it under accessories and let's just hope the airbags don't deploy. Otherwise it could be a very rough rod to work tomorrow. All right, here we go. Of course we have, what? Oh. No, we don't. Okay. Well, we do have an airbag fault coming up. It's flashing at us. So it's telling me that my door is open. And it's, yeah, it's flashing that my airbag is also not ready. So yeah, unfortunately, we might have to swap over the bases between this car and the other car. Uh, yeah, that's gonna annoy me. So yeah, we'll put the seats on hold tonight. Uh, I'm gonna have to do a little bit more work. Um, I will leave the other seats outside the car at the moment. That way I can try and figure out exactly what I need to do to actually uh, switch over the looms. Apart from that, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, hope you guys really enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to subscribe and leave a thumbs up. I know this is pretty long and pretty boring, but hope you guys enjoyed the little car update about everything I need to do. Um, obviously, I had no idea how long it was going to take to try and get those other seats in, and plus we did some other stuff anyway. So, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you again soon. Peace out.